the sun's magnetic field has flipped. What makes the solar maximum dangerous? The sun is the foundation of life on our planet, but its activity is far from always predictable. We can observe cyclical fluctuations in solar activity, which can be compared to the breathing of a giant star. One of the most interesting and dynamic periods of this process is the solar maximum. Today, I will tell you about what the peak of the sun's activity is and what happens with it every 11 years. Let's go! Some astronomers predict that the peak of solar activity will occur in 2025, possibly even earlier. This moment, called the solar maximum, represents the highest point of solar activity within a complete solar cycle. And it is characterized by the strongest and most chaotic magnetic field of the sun. As a result, in the coming years, Earth may face more extreme solar weather conditions. Each solar cycle lasts about 11 years on average and the maximum is usually observed in the middle of it. These peak events can vary in their intensity. From extremely powerful, as expected in 2025, to less pronounced, as it was in the cycle that ended in 2021. The final intensity of the solar maximum expected in 2025 will determine how serious the consequences will be for Earth. In particular, it will affect the likelihood of solar flares or coronal mass ejections. Masses that can cause serious problems for our planet. Although such cycles occur quite frequently and do not pose a threat at the individual level, increased solar activity can lead to more frequent radio communication disruptions and interference with satellites in space. Furthermore, there is a possibility that the radiation produced by these phenomena could have a dangerous impact on the health of astronauts, as well as on passengers and crew of airplanes traveling at high altitudes. It is forecasted that the solar maximum in 2025 will be significantly more powerful than the previous one. Although the exact degree of its intensity has not yet been determined, we are already observing X-class flares, which indicates an increase in solar activity as we approach the peak. Also, as the solar cycle reaches its maximum, an increase in the number of auroras can be expected. The solar cycle is the periodic change in the sun's activity associated with the increase and decrease in the number of sunspots. In the mid-19th century, scientists noticed that there is a certain periodicity on the sun approximately every 10 years, when the number of sunspots increases and then decreases. This process was first recorded by the German amateur astronomer Samuel Heimich Schwab, and then it was studied by the Swiss astronomer and mathematician Johann Rudolf Wolf. In honor of these scientists, the solar activity cycle was named the Schwab cycle or the Schwab-Wolf cycle. The sun's activity cycle consists of two phases. In the first stage, which lasts on average about four years, there is a rapid increase in the number of sunspots. Then, over approximately seven years, their number gradually decreases. During each cycle, other changes also occur. For example, the area where sunspots appear gradually shifts closer to the sun's equator over time. Solar cycles have been numbered since 1755. Currently, we are in the 25th cycle, which began in December 2019. The previous 24th cycle was an exception, as it lasted almost 11 years and spanned from January 2009 to December 2019. From the 18th to the 20th century, the length of solar cycles vary from 7 to 17 years. And in the 20th century, the average duration of the cycle was closer to 10 and a half years, so the term 11-year cycle is conditional. According to forecasts from the World Center, data on the sunspot index, and long-term observations, the peak of solar activity is expected between mid-2024 and the end of 2025. At the same time, specialists from the Space Weather Prediction Center of the National Weather Service in the United States believe that the maximum solar activity may occur slightly later, from the end of 2024 to the beginning of 2026. According to Sergei Bogachev, Head of the Solar Astronomy Laboratory at the Russian Academy of Sciences, solar activity in 2024 has already been unusually high. Despite the fact that the end of the year seemed relatively calm, this was likely just a temporary pause, and the sun will soon become active again. This cycle has already exceeded forecasts by 70%, noted the astronomer. He also warned that extremely powerful solar flares are expected. According to him, even when the peak of activity is passed, Intense phenomena will not cease. The sun's activity will remain high at least until 2026, and possibly even until 2028. 
Thus, the risk for Earth will persist for a considerable time. At the same time, NASA recently held a press conference where it stated that the sun has already reached its peak activity. According to previous forecasts, the maximum level of solar activity was supposed to last from October 2024 to January 2025. Thus, as Bogachev noted, there are many different forecasts and assessments, and the situation remains uncertain. Experts from the European Space Agency believe that solar activity continues to increase and has not yet reached its peak. However, they also warn that within a single solar cycle, a so-called double peak can occur. When a second, more intense peak follows the first one. So how can we accurately determine that the sun has reached its peak activity? To do this, astronomers calculate the number of sunspots and the groups into which these spots are combined. Using a simple formula, which even schoolchildren can handle, the so-called wolf number is calculated, serving as the main indicator of solar activity at the current moment. The higher this number, the higher the sun's activity. Although this rule was proposed back in the 19th century, it remains fundamental, despite astronomers having other methods to measure solar activity. However, the wolf number is unstable. Sunspots appear, disappear, hide beyond the solar disk, and then reappear. Groups of spots also constantly form and disband. So to obtain an accurate indicator, the data must be averaged. Usually, the average value of the wolf number is calculated for a month, and then the following rule is applied. The solar maximum is considered to have passed if, during the six months before and after the month in question, the wolf number was not higher than in that month. For example, if in July the number of spots and their groups was particularly high, and during the six months before July, from January to June, such levels were not observed, and in the following six months, from August to January, there was also no recorded increase, then it can be stated that July was a solar peak. But when exactly can it be asserted that the peak has already passed? Only six months after that month, that is, in February? It turns out that at the very peak, we cannot be sure that we are indeed at the peak. After all, the number of spots could suddenly increase the next day. Researcher Wei Fan from the Space Weather Prediction Center believes that it all depends on whether the solar storm hits Earth. For solar storms to affect Earth, they must be directed in the right direction at the right time. Increased solar activity raises the likelihood of this, but does not guarantee that the planet will be at the epicenter of new storms, she added. If a solar storm does reach Earth, it can ionize the upper layers of the atmosphere, causing disruptions in radio communications and satellites. Major storms that block communication with space objects can temporarily disable long-range radio signals, GPS operations, and systems over large areas of the planet, explained Funk. This in itself does not pose a significant threat, but if a prolonged communication outage coincides with a natural disaster, such as an earthquake or tsunami, the consequences could be catastrophic. Strong solar storms can also generate electric currents on the Earth's surface, leading to damage to metal infrastructure including old power grids and railway tracks. Airline passengers may encounter increased levels of radiation during solar storms, although it is not yet clear whether this radiation will be dangerous to health. Nevertheless, such radiation spikes will be much more significant for astronauts aboard spacecraft, such as the International Space Station or upcoming Artemis missions to the Moon. In this regard, future space missions must take into account solar activity cycles, noted Funk. Additionally, the ionization of the upper layers of the atmosphere leads to its densification, which can create additional resistance for satellites in Earth's orbit. This resistance can lead to satellite collisions or alter their orbit. For example, in February 2022, 40 Starlink satellites from SpaceX burned up in the atmosphere when they suddenly fell to Earth during a geomagnetic storm that occurred the day after their launch. In recent years, the number of satellites has significantly increased compared to previous solar cycles. Most satellites now belong to commercial companies, which rarely consider solar weather factors when designing and playing launches. At the same time, these companies aim to launch satellites as quickly as possible to avoid delaying rocket launches. Sometimes they prefer to launch a whole batch of satellites and lose some of them rather than delay the launch, explained Funk. All of this increases the risks of collisions or satellites being deorbited during a solar maximum. Moreover, 
there is a possibility of a superstorm occurring, similar to the Carrington event in 1859, when the sky worldwide was lit up by countless aurora borealis displays and telegraph systems failed. Across Europe and North America, it also increases during a solar maximum. She added that such a storm could cause damage amounting to trillions of dollars. Therefore, more accurate solar weather forecasts are necessary to help us prepare for the worst-case scenario. High solar activity is manifested through solar flares and magnetic storms. People who feel fluctuations in the Earth's magnetic field may encounter various problems. However, medical statistics indicate that the impact of magnetic storms on human health is negligible. According to Russian scientist Alexander Chizevsky, periods of maximum solar activity also coincide with outbreaks of epidemics, pandemics, and even an increase in crime. Overall, during such periods, people tend to engage in more extreme actions. Statistics confirm this pattern, but the cause of these phenomena remains unknown. As for the influence of solar activity on the weather, the connection here is not obvious. There have been years with cold, rainy summers during high solar activity. However, we should not forget that we are also experiencing an era of global warming. Regardless of its causes, predicting a hot summer is practically impossible. And if the summer is hot, clear, and sunny, and coincides with the peak of solar activity, then ultraviolet radiation becomes dangerous. It is precisely at such times that it's important to remember safety, wear hats, avoid direct sunlight at noon, and use good sunscreen. The Sun is a G2b type star, also known as a yellow dwarf. The designation G2v indicates that it belongs to the second subcategory of yellow stars of class G with a surface temperature of about 9,980 degrees Fahrenheit. The letter V indicates that the Sun belongs to main sequence stars. The Sun is the largest object in our solar system. Its radius is approximately 432,288 miles from the center to the surface, and the mass of the Sun accounts for 99.86% of the entire mass of the solar system. It is so large that about 1.3 million Earths could fit inside it. However, on the scale of the universe, it is considered a medium-sized star. There are stars that can be 10 times smaller, as well as those that exceed the size of the Sun by more than 700 times. The temperature of the sun varies widely from 27 million to 10,112 degrees Fahrenheit on the surface. Despite the fact that the surface of the sun is, let's say, cooler, it is so hot that it cannot contain any solid or liquid substances. Therefore, the sun does not have a solid surface, and even if you could somehow withstand the high temperature, you wouldn't be able to simply stand on the sun. The sun is essentially white because it emits all the colors of the visible spectrum. But for us on Earth, it appears orange or yellow, and sometimes even red when it is low on the horizon. This is because Earth's atmosphere scatters short blue wavelengths of light, more strongly than the longer wavelengths of red, orange, and yellow. Thus, we perceive only certain parts of the spectrum. The Sun rotates counterclockwise. However, because it does not have a solid structure, its different parts rotate at different speeds. It takes the sun's equator about 25 days to complete one full rotation, while its poles do so in 35 days. Additionally, the sun orbits around the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way. It takes the sun about 225 to 250 million years to complete one orbit around the galactic center. The sun has existed for about 4 billion 600 million years and is in the middle of its life cycle. It belongs to the population one generation of stars, which includes young stars rich in metals, characteristic of the spiral arms of the galaxy, the Milky Way. The Sun began to form from a molecular cloud consisting mainly of hydrogen and helium. As a result of a star exploding near this cloud, a shock wave caused it to compress. Under the influence of gravity, the cloud began to contract, rotate, and heat up. Over time, most of the hydrogen and helium concentrated in the center of this hot rotating cloud. When the temperature in the center rose high enough, the process of nuclear fusion began, leading to the formation of the Sun as we observe it today. Nuclear fusion is the primary process that powers the Sun. 
The composition of the sun is mainly 73% hydrogen and 25% helium. The remaining 2% consists of elements such as oxygen, carbon, neon, nitrogen, iron, magnesium, silicon, and others. An interesting feature is the high concentration of gold and uranium in the sun compared to other stars, which supports the hypothesis of its origin from gas left after a supernova explosion. Interestingly, our planet also formed from the protoplanetary disk left after a supernova explosion, which explains the increased gold content on Earth compared to other celestial bodies. Later meteorite bombardment also brought additional supplies of this valuable metal. Even though the sun appears to be a gaseous object, its density is about 21.6%. Grains per cubic inch, which is much greater than the density of water. If the sun's temperature were low, a person could float in it, exerting much less effort to stay on the surface. But of course, this is impossible. The sun, as a yellow dwarf star, has an estimated lifespan of about 10 billion years. Since it is currently in the middle of its life cycle, over the next 5 billion years, it will undergo several significant transformations. When the hydrogen in the sun's core is depleted, it will begin transitioning into the red giant stage. At this stage, the core will contract, the temperature will rise, and the process of nuclear fusion will continue using helium. As a result, the sun will expand significantly and become so enormous that it will engulf Mercury, Venus, and possibly Earth. In doing so, it will increase in size by 200 times. When the sun reaches the red giant stage, the temperature in its core will rise to about 180 million degrees in Fahrenheit, and the transformation of helium into carbon will begin. This will cause the outer layers of the sun to be shed, and the remaining core will turn into a white dwarf a star that will have a size comparable to that of Earth. But the mass will remain almost the same as that of the Sun. White dwarfs make up about 10% of all stars in the Milky Way. Over time, the white dwarf will cool and dim, eventually becoming a black dwarf, which will be extremely cold and non-radiating. Light. However, this will take billions of years. And thus, our star will continue to exist in its new state much longer than in its current stage. The sun is inevitably approaching the peak of its activity, which, according to forecasts, will be observed in 2025. This means that in the coming years, we can expect more solar surprises. However, there's no need to panic. Scientists are closely monitoring the sun's behavior, using modern technology to predict potential threats, so they can warn us in advance and minimize risks to our planet. As for the fate of the sun, it is inevitable, but it is still very far off so we will continue to enjoy the sunlight and warmth to the fullest for a long time to come. And that's all for today. Goodbye, everyone.